we're going to take a ruler and we're going to measure six inches with the ruler and mark it and then you're going to take another ruler and you're going to make a line that's where you're going to put the tape to separate the stencil from the remain of the remainder of the design so um, I like this type of rulers because you can see if it is straight so make sure this is very important it has to be straight so make sure it flush with the edge in there and then you can measure the six inches and mark it and that is where you're gonna put the tape and then you can check if it is six inches and my turn to be a tiny bit less than six inches but try to make it six inches so it is easier for you okay so once you know that it is completely straight then you're gonna put a piece of tape like this on the line and you're gonna base coat the right side with the green mixture and the left side is going to be base coated with brown mother so start base coating first this side and then you can uh, move the tape to the other side okay so I have only one coat of that co uh, green mixture that I told you and that's okay uh, because we're gonna now put other colors um, that uh, color that I was using this surface that I'm using it grabs more color in certain areas than others but that's okay because we're gonna do a very um, background with a lot of different colors so now we're gonna have we're gonna have sea glass and the Americana sea glass we're gonna have teal green and we need to have some dark colors um, I am gonna have plantation pine and midnight green and then we're gonna have some metallic colors because we are going to have metallics on this piece and this is moss green and dark patina and we are also going to put some of the rose gold metallic luster so I have some natural sea sponges and I wet them first and I'm gonna put all the colors on my palette and I'm gonna sponge some uh, I'm gonna have a sponge effect with the colors so I'm going to start with the green mix because that way if you have the color of the background your mixes in here are gonna be softer they're gonna blend better so I'm putting the color of the background first the green make sure that we prepared and then I'm gonna grab some of the sea glass which is a lighter color and I want it lighter in this area because that is where we're gonna have the flower so I want it lighter in this area and I want to start making it darker as it goes away of the area so then I'm gonna take teal green and start making it darker with the teal green teal green teal green is a little bit cooler so it's making it cooler on the edges you want to soften you can take the lighter side of the of the sponge and I have not cleaned my sponge because I started with the light colors and then I'm going to the darker colors this is um, plantation pine I'm gonna put in the edges some darker color and that's probably too warm so I'm just gonna put it on that side and then take the uh, midnight green which is cooler and put it on the other side I probably at this I probably need to clean this brush so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna clean the brush fast so I can take the teal green 
on the other side. Still is a tiny bit warm, but not as warm as plantation pine. And since I took a little time to stop, it's dry a little bit, but that's okay. Okay. Now I think I need to put a tiny bit more of the light. So I'm taking another uh, clean sponge so I don't have to stop. But you can stop and clean your sponge. And I'm going to put a tiny bit more of the light in the area where the flowers are. The flower. And I didn't like too much the way that this sponge works. So I'm going to take the other one. Try different sponges because they have different design. I think that's enough for, for this. And taking the clean side and just blending all that together. I don't want it to... that you can see all the... You want to see that some texture, but um, very smooth texture. So I'm putting the clean section and just blending it a tiny bit better. Take that tiny bit of the teal. Tiny bit of the teal. And I'm going to call it done. You can be here working forever with this. And I'm going to use the exact same tape I used before for two reasons. I don't like to waste materials. And also, because that way it doesn't have that much as uh, glue and will not damage your painted uh, area. So, uh, position the tape now on the other side like this. And we're going to paint now. We're going to base coat now the red section completely with two to three coats of brown mother. It has to be an opaque coat so that it's completely covered. It has three coats already but this color is very transparent and it does not cover too well. So what I decided to do is that I'm going to sponge it because I wanted to have um, the same effect like in here but um, I also want to bring a darker color for the edges and I'm gonna use black plum so we're gonna put um, we're gonna sponge this color which was the brown mother and we're going to sponge it so that it is darker and lighter on some areas the light color that you're seeing is the same color but a thinner layer so you have this and remember to do the edges so now I'm going to take the black plum which is it's a red brown color and I'm gonna take it with the same dirty sponge and just add some darker edges with the black plum and since the red is wet you're blending it with the red. Make sure you move your sponge and do the edges. So now when we're gonna play a tiny bit with metallic luster colors because I want to make this look like a patina. And I'm gonna start with the rose gold because my flower has a peachy tone and this is like a peachy color so I'm gonna put it uh, with water on the brush and I'm just gonna wet this with the water and then I'm gonna move it 
and sometimes I'm going to just pounce and sometimes I'm just going to rub it and I want to put different colors uh, in here so I'm just going to start with this one and put it here and there and then move to the next one and I don't think I'm going to put it on the red section okay, so I put it here and there you see what I put it, you can tell in the screen. And now I'm going to try to add Rich Espresso, which is a darker color. Whoops, and that was too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this. I'm going to use a sponge to apply this one. So I'm using, I'm wetting, I wet the sponge and I'm using the sponge to apply this one. Don't put too much and don't forget your edges. Now the Coarse has some wonderful dusty metallic colors and we're going to play with these. Uh, this is Royal Ruby copper and we have Venetian gold glorious gold moss pearl and dark patina these are not the only colors that they have I'm just using a few of them so I'm gonna start with the royal ruby gorgeous color and I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of rust. This is rust. Um, dark patinas, I mean patina green also always has some rust color. And if you want this color can go on the other side. It, it will go well with the other side. So you can put this color on both sides. Don't overdo. And don't forget to put it on the bottom section. I mean on the sides. Don't forget to add these on the sides. Then I'm not going to even clean it and I'm going to go into the Venetian gold and put a tiny bit of the Venetian gold. And sometimes you can even take a liner or a round brush this is Roger Ruby. Take some of the glorious gold. I don't want to put too much of this gold. It's overpowering the green. But what we're going to do we are going to bring back some of the green so this is dark patina let's bring back some of the green but it's going to be now a metallic color uh, it's going to help blend that in there Okay, so let's bring back some of the green with the dark patina. And blend all that together. And a lighter green will be the moss pearl and you can add that um, to the center. 
so that it stays quiet in the center. Okay, so I think we have enough. It is it bring that color lighter, um, and I think that will be better. Okay, so let's stop here. Before I go, I want to put some copper because this is so red in here. So then I want to put some copper too. I'm going to bring some of that red from the other side in here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to let this dry and probably bring some more of the Ice Espresso which was a dark gold color. So I'm going to dry this, I'm going to take another picture for you and I will bring the dark espresso. Before I take the picture I want to show you that if you believe that you have put too much you can always bring back um, the colors that you previously put in here. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring some of that color, those colors. Bring back the green mix and the teal. This is the green mix. And I want to make um, still the edges darker the teal maybe not that much of the teal okay and then I'm gonna bring back the midnight green I'm gonna mix the midnight, midnight green with the green mix and the teal midnight green plus the two green uh, the green mix midnight green and teal Now I'm going to dry these. really like how this rich espresso has a... You have to see it in person, how it looks so cute, so pretty. It really looks so pretty. Let's put some on that side too. This um, I'm ticking it with this rich um, espresso metallic luster, it's giving it an antique look. So I'm gonna put this color also on the. But on the sides and we're gonna be calling down the background okay so I positioned the stencil and I'm going to, to just use um, glorious gold to stencil this in here so that it shows uh, the other colors does not show in here and I'm just gonna put gold and I was gonna tell you that um, this stencil is very intricate but um, it also uh, lift a tiny bit so it doesn't work with the texture paste like other stencil uh, does. I tried and I had to clean it. But if you want to use the texture paste, which is wonderful that I have used in many of my projects, Deco Hearts has a wonderful product that you can use. So I'm using, I'm stenciling with a finger dauber. I will put it in your instructions. The Decoart Dazzly Metallic Glorious Gold. 
the only color that I'm going to use. If after you do this you don't like it, you can quiet it down a tiny bit with the ice uh, metallic luster, the ice espresso, the one we'll use on the other side. But I think this is the only one that will show better on this background. And the idea of putting the background in red was because uh, the gold looks very pretty uh, on top of red. I remember when I learned to use, um, to do gold leafing, they always told me to use red underneath the gold. It makes the gold looks richer. You know that um, red is like an, I mean gold is, it has red in it. How do you make gold? You make gold with purple and yellow. And purple is made with red and blue. So red is inside the formulation of gold. Okay, so after you have pounced with this dauber, and if you think you have enough, then you lift it and you're gonna have your gold design in there. And remove everything and let it dry. If you want, you can extend the design on top and bottom. I don't think I will. One final th thought. After you have done this, if you feel that you lost too much of the red by applying the ice espresso, you, this is a very um, light color is very transparent so you can take the brown mother and take uh, put a tiny bit of brown mother glaze on top of that and I will show you I'm gonna put a small amount of the brown mother and I'm gonna use water and I'm just showing you because you're gonna be doing this and if you think that you have covered too much of the red and you want to bring a tiny bit more of the red then take a brush, any brush, and with a tiny bit of, of the round mother, you can always bring that color back. You see how easy it is? Let's put it's that tiny bit in doll in there so you can put this color. Okay, so that it is for the background, and now we're going to find our pattern, and I'm going to show you how to trace it. So you're going to need white graphite paper, and you're going to position, you see the darkest part is on the top, and the whiter part is on the bottom, touching your surface, and you're going to use a stylus, and I'm going to show you what a stylus is. This is a stylus. It has a bowl, different sizes. You can use whichever size you prefer. And you're going to lightly press, very lightly press underneath. I'm going to show you in a lower section so that I can lift it and show you. You're going to press and then you're going to check what you have. And it doesn't show too much in here. Let's see. Let me do another section. So you're gonna position it, and I don't want to have it too dark because then I'm gonna have trouble covering it. So I want to show you. Can you see it? We have so much coloring here that you probably can see the lines in there. So you're going to draw for your design like that and then we're going to start painting the flower. We're going to paint one petal at a time and we're going to be using the Dynasty Brushes Black Gold by Dynasty and we're going to use the series 206CB. 
and the reason being is because the hairs are shorter and they hold less water so it helps with the blending. Uh, the first step we're going to paint one petal at a time and the first step for the petals is to base coat with one coat of sand. And what you're going to do is do one petal at a time so that you're able to separate the petals. And there's um it's going to be very hard because I cannot see the lines but you probably will be able to see yours better. So um, we're just going to put one coat of this color to this petal. So you're going to base coat one petal at a time and hard um, light colors are hard to cover. They usually need several coats and especially if they are on a dark background. So what you do, you try not to leave any reach of paint and you put as many coats as you need to cover that area. And you're going to leave the dark sections in the middle and just going to paint the lighter areas of the petal. And we're going to do one petal at a time, but I just wanted to show you up to, um, for both of them since this one is different than this one. Um, because this it has a dark center and this one doesn't. So this will be your first step to base coat the petal until you don't have any background showing and it has a solid coverage. So I'm going to do this outside of the camera and we'll be right back. When you come to this section, make sure you break the line in there. Okay, and I think you have now a uh, good coverage and now I'm going to take a picture for you and we're going to continue with the next step. Make sure you go all the way down to the second line that you have in here uh, because this is a line that I put for the yellow but the, we are just we're gonna cover all that with the sand and we're just gonna leave the section that is going to be the next color which is gonna be the brown mother. So this is brown mother and this is gonna be sand and this petal only has the sand. You have to um, let it dry between coats because right now I put another coat. If you start trying to cover that you're gonna make a hole so try, try to leave your layers dry before you put the second layer. Now this smaller section in here uh, there are gonna be that's a petal that is underneath and there's this section in here that is lighter and there are two sections like that this one in here and this one in here that's going to be base coated with the warm white, tradition warm white. So this section in here and this section in here. So I'm going to give several coats to this and I'm going to take another picture for you. And this light, it also goes into this section in here.
and this one you can put it like that so these are the warm white sections Base coat this with several coats of the warm white. And I'm using an, a smaller size. This is a size 3 and it is a uh, 206S. Since I am base coating, it doesn't matter if you use the ones that have the longer hairs. Um, for the blending, you're going to need to have the ones that are chisel blender. Okay, so I'm going to um, finish base coating this and take another picture for you. Now this dark section in the center is set for the yellow area in here. You're not going to put this color. But in this section, you're going to put um, brown mother. And this is the color that we use on this section. And re remember that I told you that it's uh, transparent. So you're going to have to also put several coats of this color. So base coat this area with this uh, brown mother tradition color. Um, I was going to tell you, if you happen to have um, a raised area, what you can do is you can sand uh, with wet sand, what you do, you take sandpaper, a light sandpaper, like 400, and you wet it, and you sand like that, uh, with that. And that will lower that raised area, and then you can reapply the color if it need to. So we are now going to base coat this area entirely with the brown mother. And then um, we're going to base coat the center and I'm going to take another picture after I have base coated with the brown mother. Remember to put flat strokes, flatten every ridges and you're going to be fine. So we are base coating the center area with brown mother and we are going to put a coat for now that is uh, not as opaque and we're going to put other dark uh, shade because we want some areas of this section to be uh, more transparent than others. So for now, put a light coat of this brown mother in here. Since it has a dark background, it's not going to look as light. Although it is a transparent color, it's showing some of the background through. That's okay. We're going to put lines in here and we're going to shade this section too. This is only a base coat. Okay, so I am base coating all, all three petals, all three sections at the same time because the, I already have something separating them. I didn't base coat this section because then it will blend with this. So you 
need to put to do uh, sections at a time and sometimes you know uh, if you base code or both areas then you don't have anything to separate so that you can know where to where the pedal starts and where it ends so I only base code areas that are already separated let's see this goes there's a light section in here a light section in there and then the rest you can go all the way to to there so this is the covers that I want. So this one probably needs another coat. So I'm gonna give another coat to the lower to this one and then we can move to base coat the light at the yellow mid center. We are just base coating at this moment, then we're going to highlight and shade. Okay, saffron yellow is too transparent, so what I did was I'm going to start this base coat with sand plus saffron yellow, and that is going to give it a more uh, opaque base coat, and then later on we can put more of the saffron yellow because you see how transparent it still is so we're gonna need several coats of this color it's extremely transparent and liquid so start with a light coat let it dry and then move on to another layer of color and the last layer you can just put the saffron and make it darker so first you're gonna start with both the saffron plus the sand and then you're going to put the final coat just put the saffron so I'm going to keep on doing this and we'll be right back now we are on the last layer and I'm just going to put saffron on this last layer. And you see how transparent this saffron is. I put a large amount of saffron in my brush because it is so transparent. Okay, so now I'm going to take another picture for you. Now we're going to start playing with color. We're going to add a lights and we're going to add darks. Uh, this petal is very, very light. It'll, it will have tints of yellow and tints of pink. And highlights with white. So we're going to start with the number 8206CV. And I'm going to have some of that sand um, because it will l help you with the blending process. So start with the sand and the first thing that we're gonna do at the top we are going to start highlighting it with warm white. And you want to follow the direction of the petal. So it goes always to the center need to have the background in there I'm 
if the colors are not blending too well, you can always use a tiny bit of the uh, blending extender. Um, if you're using Americana, you can use a dry time extender medium. And I'm going to put a tiny bit on my brush. Dry time extender medium. You can put it a tiny bit on the... You can put it either on the paint, or you can put it on the brush, or you can apply it to the surface before you start painting. Now, it starts that highlight with warm white, but then I'm going to take a tiny bit of the medium rose with the sand and start giving it some pink stripes. So you see what happened there? My brush was contaminated, so I had to clean the brush because I don't want the pink to go all the way to the top. I want only warm white in there. And these will have to be cleaned by drying and starting um, painting all over that section. Okay, so I have those stripes and I want, I want to start tinting with yellow. And I'm going to start with banana cream. And you'll still have to have the sand because the sand is the base coat. So you have to have the sand. And take some sand with banana cream. And start adding some. Let's take some, a tiny bit of warm white in there. And then we are going to use an even stronger yellow and let's take a bright yellow in here. So bright yellow. Gonna take a tiny bit of this bright bright yellow and put it in here. Now I'm gonna take a tiny bit of the uh, brown mother with my warm white. Okay, so I'm going to stop so I can take a picture of this. Before I take the picture, I'm going to finish this section. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I did. Uh, sand plus medium white. And that's going to be in the border. Oops. In the border. And I'm going to make some areas lighter than others. And then we're going to have some of the banana cream and some of the sand with the banana cream. And that's going to be in the section underneath. underneath. So I start bringing some of the yellow in there. Remember to follow 
the direction of the petal. And then we're going to take some of that medium rose plus the sand. Always have the sand when you're doing this and follow the direction of the petal. This in here you can put a tiny bit more of the medium rose in there and then start blending with the sand. Following the direction so in some areas like for example this section in here you can add a tiny bit more of that medium rose and then again blend with the sand Let's put a tiny bit darker in here In here okay then let's see let's put a lot of sand and I'm gonna clean my brush and it's gonna take very tiny amount of the medium rose with the sand and in this section in here and blend with the top section. And right now blending, I did not put any more paint on my brush. I'm just trying to blend this a tiny bit in here. Because these are tradition paint, they stay open a tiny bit longer and you can play a tiny bit more with the colors. Not I'm I'm mixing the tradition with the Americana colors. Now before I continue so that I can uh, do this step on all of them, I'm going to take a picture and then I'm going to put the the cast shadow and then I can do this step on all of them. Okay, we're gonna take um, a number 10 brush and the dry time extender and we're gonna put it on this petal and that's gonna help with the blending of the cast shadow I was going to use raw sienna, but it, it didn't work the way, the way I wanted to. And we're going to use the, in our brush, we're going to have the extender, so it's going to be a very sheer coat. And we're going to start with here, and we're going to put this color. And then we're going to also put it on the other side. Put a tiny bit more in 
in here. Sometimes when you use your finger it works better but if you don't want to use your fingers you can also use um, a mop. So I'm going to put a this is a very dirty color you can see all the dirt inside this color brown colors have a lot of dirt and most of the time they need to be blended so I'm going to put in the cast shadow and I'm blend, uh, trying to blend I want it, it to be very sheer and before this dries it has some extenders so you can play with this mop it remove any very uh, dark edges if you need to put apply it twice you can apply it twice but make sure that you remove any very very dark edges I'm gonna dry it before I apply some more um, and we'll be right back dried it and I'm going to reapply this cast shadow before I take the picture for you. So I'm applying the dry time extender one more time and I'm going to have now that it extended it to here. Again I'm using that burn umber that is a tradition burn umber and it's very dark. So you want to remove some of it before you put it on the on the brush. I mean on the piece. Okay, so it continues in here. And then it starts disappearing. And we are going to reapply it in here. See, that's too much. Too much. If you put too much, you can soften it with a mop. Or use your fingers. It's okay to use the fingers too. I'm gonna dry it so that I can apply it one more time. Extender again on both sections. I like to work on my pieces on layers and we're gonna do more layers on this. This is only like a second stage layer and we're gonna do another one. Let's see what right now. We want to, to, to put all the other petals at this stage and that's what I'm gonna do before we start with the next stage. Well, let's finish with this cut shadow and when you want a uh, flow to be wider um, you have to walk it a tiny bit on your palette so you walk it a tiny bit on your palette go back and forth I'm making it wider and I'm gonna remove a tiny bit on a paper towel I'm going to remove the, because you see it has too much. And then, I want to give it the shape that it has. It has a shape that is like in here. 
is is in here like this and then in here like this that's the shape we're gonna blend in here with that extender that is underneath and I'm gonna soften it with a mop soften it with a mop especially the edges but we still want to be able to see it very clearly that is that is there This is probably the hardest part to do cast shadow because they have to be transparent but they are like a raw sienna or burnt umber color but burnt umber is a very strong color so it's very very hard to do um, a cast shadow and I'm gonna do paint a tiny bit more the other one because I also want to be able to see the other one. Also, when, if you need to soften something, you can add a tiny bit of the extender and blending, and it will also soften. So the edges in there, I can soften them with the extender and blending. I'm gonna go again to the burn umber. with a dry tan extender is the one that I'm using dry tan extender and I'm going to put it again in here one more time because I want to see it gonna make certain areas darker there now I'm gonna take another picture for you uh, I'm gonna base coat this section with sand and I will be right back okay so before before I paint this petal in here I want to tell you, uh, you see this petal is a tiny bit raised in here and it is, that's what I told you to put darker in there. Uh, if it still doesn't show that uh, it is darker, you can take a tiny bit more of the, you can take the brown mother and even you can add a tiny bit of the, a tiny bit of the Raw um, I mean burr umber and make sure that you put some dry time extender in there and then you can shade a tiny bit that section so brown mother Burn umber and brown mother with a dry time extender. And let's mop it. Um, also you can put that color also in some of here for example in here in there yes make sure that it it goes
the right shape. I mean, not shape, but the right um, direction of the stroke because it's like this. Okay, let's also take some bright yellow and shade. So we're shading a tiny bit. I'm going to reshading here with the bright yellow. I want to reshade in here with the bright yellow. Let's see. This also can be shaded in here. So we are shading with bright yellow. On the yellow areas, we are shading with bright yellow. And on the pink areas, we're shading with the brown mother and burnt umber. And we're going to highlight also. And this time, we're going to highlight with titanium white. Highlighting here. In here. There. In here. So this is highlight with the tiny white. Okay, this petal, there's a tiny section, tiny section in here that is pinkier uh, because this color is blended with, um, in some areas, this color is going to be blended with the background, uh, I put a uh, brown mother plus sand in there, and I'm gonna continue base coating this one with the sand the same way we did the other petal. Now we want to bring, since we already have the cast shadow in here, we can start base coating because I want to base coat as much as I can to bring all the petals to the same uh, level or stage that this one is. So I'm going to start base coating this one the same way we did the others. We're going to base coat completely this one with the sand. And I will return when I have finished doing that so that we can start um, uh, doing all the shadings and the same way we did this one. So don't forget to base coat this tiny flipping here and this petal in here and then we're gonna move on to this one we're gonna um, do these two petals the same way we did this one so that we can base coat the final pe uh, this petal and that one okay so we want to bring these two petals to the same stage as this one so we're gonna start with uh, what we did with the other that we took a uh, sand plus titanium white And we started highlighting it. And it uh, it's only have the white on this section. I'm running out of titanium. Uh, that was not titanium white, I'm sorry. It was warm white. So warm white plus sand. So you're going to take sand on the brush and then 
put sand on the brush and on the tip you're gonna put warm white and you're going to make these edges lighter and the sand is gonna help blend the color okay like that it can also have a tiny bit on the other section in here but not as much as in here okay then we continued and we put some yellow although this one doesn't have that much yellow now it has the pink so let's go with the pink which was the medium rose plus sand and we have to follow the petal comes like this and you want to have sand already um, you have to wet it, wet it with sand So let's put some sand so that will help us blend in here. I always use this, this uh, sand to blend. You can start light and then you can uh, start increasing the darks. So this is the light. Now I want to make it darker in some areas. So you take a tiny bit more of the medium rose with your, for example, oops that was too much medium rose. Going to blot it with my paper tower and go to the sand, blend it with the sand. everything is fixable although I do want to have in some areas that it has tiny bit more than this one this petal is darker than the other one what I have to do is I will have to use some extender and blending I'm going to dry these after I have put the yellow. Let's put the yellow. And you remember the yellow. We started with banana cream. And then we put some um, bright yellow in some areas. So let's start with banana cream then we can strengthen some of the areas with that uh, medium rose so let's clean the brush out of the pink that we have and we're gonna go to the sunny yellow and for example it has some sunny yellow in here and in here and the other section that was not sunny yellow um, banana cream banana cream I did put some new yellow in there but I'm gonna put banana cream in here 
and I'm gonna go to the bright yellow. This one is very bright in here, bright yellow. bright yellow okay so we are gonna dry this we're gonna dry this put some bright yellow in here The direction of the brush always going toward the center and I'm doing lines and I'm going to now I'm going to take another picture dry it and take another picture you can put even put some in here. I'm gonna put some of the bright yellow in here. And let's also put uh, banana cream on this one. Oops, I was I didn't mean to do that. Let's clean that area in there. So you're gonna take banana cream on the side of your brush. You can make it a float if you want to. And I have on my website um, and in the acrylic painting club we have many videos on technique and one of them is on floating if you need a refreshener on floating and the videos are from different artists I'm gonna keep if you lost your your number you can reapply it. So, dear. And remember that we also mop. Okay, let's um, put some, also some light in there so we're gonna take the banana cream I mean the not banana cream the the warm white plus sand and let's um, highlight this section in here So, sand plus some warm white. There's a small cast shadow. This petal is placing, this one in here is placing a small cast shadow on that one. So, a tiny bit of the burnt umber.
this one on top of this one in here. And you remember that we did that several times, we applied several times the cast shadow uh, in order for them to really show. So, try to reapply it a tiny bit. So I'm going to apply it and I'm going to dry it and then I can reapply it. Because I have to mop it because it's, it's probably this mop is too wet. So I'm going to find an, uh, I'm going to clean this mop, dry it very good and then we can reapply this. Sometimes even the, the sometimes the finger works better than the mop. But I understand if you don't want to use your fingers, then you use the mop. It's already showing, so I'm gonna let it dry and. Let's see. We're going to highlight that section too. So now we have all these things in here. We can put, we can base coat the one underneath. I don't even see it anymore. I will have to um, put it back. So I am highlighting with one white. A float of warm white in there. That's one in here too. And then um, you can all so do the next stage um, which is um, darken and highlights I think it's dry already so I'm gonna really dry it with a blower and we can do the second stage on this one uh, but first I'm gonna f do this second stage on this one so that we can do the third Okay, let's put a tiny bit of the extender, drying extender in this. Remember, you can either put, see this was not dry, and when I put the drying time extender, it took the paint, it started taking the paint off. So you have to be careful. Um, you can either put, put the dry time extender if it is very dry, or you can either... Uh, start with a base coat or a layer of your underneath color which was sand of your base coat so you can re-wet it with um, with your base coat color and that uh, will help you blend the next layer and that's what I'm doing I am applying again the sand so that it helps me blend but it is very fine if you smear that color because it is smeared in the in the original I mean in the photograph it blends with that color so now we are going to start with the one white on the top and 
Remember, this is the first highlight. We start with warm white and then we put um, titanium white. But first, it's warm white. This is the second stage. We have not done the third or this one or, or the other one. We are just on the second stage on these two. It's so much easier when you have that extender. So now I'm going to go to the cream. Remember, banana cream was the color that we put second, and it doesn't go everywhere. But let's see, some in here, some in here, and some in here. So, banana cream, and then we're going to go to, I'm going to clean the brush, and we're going to go to the Sand Plus Medium Rose, and this one is very, very dark. So, lines. Following and then uh, we're gonna blend some with the sand. Even we can use we can even use a smaller brush <coughs> so that we can take the sand. Make sure the brush doesn't have any water and blend the edges and some sections because you wanna you wanna have variation of color <coughs> a sample. You can blend in some areas make it lighter. <coughs> that let's go again to that red color and it is even mm, darker in this area in here okay but I'm going to still blend with the uh, cream you can even if it's easier for you, you can take the mop and since you have that extender in there, you can blend it with the mop. Okay, now we have to go to the yellow. Clean brush without any of the pink. And I'm gonna go straight to the bright yellow because it is very bright in here. Okay, you can use the saffron later. I think I'm going to extend that bright yellow a tiny bit more in here. And 
and also in here. Not gonna be exactly like your like the photograph, but that's okay. Because the flowers are like that. They're not every flower is the same as the other. Okay, so I'm going to now base coat this one before I do the third stage on these two. I'm gonna base coat this one and this one with the sand and then we can do the third stage on these two. Okay, let's bring that petal in the back to the sta same level as the others. And we're gonna start by applying some of the drying time extender and we're gonna go to and that one is very very light we're gonna take some sand with one white first putting some more paint on my palette so sand plus one white and we're gonna put it in the top and notice that I am not putting it all I'm like breaking it and then that one has a tiny bit of more uh, violet so instead of taking the medium rose I'm gonna take the Queen Acridon violet with the sand and put it in there I need to clean my brush so that I can clean areas where I didn't want it to go. Okay, I'm gonna put a tiny bit on in here and on the others a tiny bit only okay and then I'm gonna go darker let's take a tiny bit of burn umber I stopped for lunch and my paints are dry now, so I am putting more paints. So the burnt umber and the violet. I think uh, we, we can put um, see that's the color that we have decided to that we said that was for the second stage shading so I already put it on that one okay so let's um, put the cast shadow with raw umber in there so that we can uh, paint the flip So it had a cast shadow in here. And 
there and now we can paint the flip in there with sand and like everything you have to be several coats so put it in there and then we have to put another coat let it dry in the meantime while that is drying we're gonna put the second station this one and we'll start with the blending and glazing or drying time extender there's a hair in there remember not to put it on the red because that red is taking a lot of time to dry okay so I put and I need to put this high there you go and now I'm going to start with the bottom section it does not gonna have any it's not gonna have any of the warm white I mean that dining white is just gonna have the warm white so just the warm white That means on this next stage we're not gonna put any any in there and then let's take some sunny yellow plus sand sunny yellow plus sand make a lighter yellow okay now we go to this to the stage of the pink medium rose plus sand Some areas are darker, some areas are lighter. Go to the sand so that we can blend this. Go to the yellow, bright yellow. Bright yellow. Bright yellow.
you notice the pink is still wet because this um, stays stay wet for a while and that helps uh, with the blending okay, let's go to the sand and blend the bottom section with the sand okay so now there only thing that is not on that second stage or that with the center but we are going to base coat this section in here so that we can um, base coat that section in there in there so that we can complete uh, the second stage and then we can do the next stage so we're gonna take a liner and this is our round number one or a liner if you don't want to use the round and I'm gonna take foliage green and a tiny bit of sand foliage green and bright yellow and it has some squigglies and probably I have to apply this several times maybe I'm gonna start with the warm white so that they show one two. we can tint them later two three there and I'm going to I put them first with the warm white and then I'm gonna tint them with the bright yellow plus foliage green plus sand okay so on top of that we are going to put queen violet queen acridone violet let's put some brown mother and maybe a tiny bit of burnt umber and sand oh, that doesn't show let's take one white with that and yellow Let's take bright yellow and the brown mother. This is the color that probably needs to be there. Brown mother and brown mother and bright yellow. That's the color I'm gonna put in your instruction. Brown mother and bright yellow. In there let's put the quickly line again with the foliage green and the and the bright yellow you don't want to lose those you may need to extend the top section with the sand and the warm white Okay, let's put again that green, foliage green plus bright yellow. Let's 
some get a tiny bit of tint of that um, bright yellow plus the brown mother make like an orangey color and sometimes we can add a tiny bit of the sand to make it even lighter in some areas and then we're gonna shade with brown mother and burn over there's a section in here that we have to fix we have to put some highlight with warm white and that is so tiny that I don't think I'm even gonna put any extender the, the warm white on one side and that's, I think that's all I'm gonna do on that section now I'm gonna go away like that the leaves only have one uh, layer of base coat but I want to show you we want to make a uh, darker uh, this area behind the flower the light is gonna come from this side so now we're gonna start highlighting and shading but what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some of the dry time extender and I'm gonna uh, bring some of the darker color of the background, the midnight green that we use on the background and I'm going to put a light um, shading of that let's see, we're gonna use the dry time extender I'm gonna put a tiny bit of dry time extender and midnight green first of all I'm going to start with a dry time extender a larger brush this is a number um, 18 and I'm going to put dry time extender in here especially be behind behind the flower I'm putting it in here and behind the flower I'm going to start shading with midnight putting some midnight on my palette okay so I'm gonna take some midnight and I'm gonna float with the midnight And I'm gonna slip flap some of this midnight in here. I even need to be more, so I added a lot of midnight. And I'm gonna uh, load some, add some midnight on this side. I don't want to lose all the detail that this background has so we have to put a tiny amount only okay there's a, a tiny bit of that too to the other side in here okay so midnight and 
let's add some in here behind the flower we can also add some uh, in this section we just add a tiny bit more of the dry time extender Even if you take it to the other side, that's okay. Remember, if you clean your brush, you have to start with the extender. So you can clean your brush, but then start with the extender again. tiny bit on the flowers and I have to clean it Now on this background, I'm going to glaze it again, and on this background, you can also add the lighter colors of the leaves too, to make um, like if there were more foliage uh, on the, uh, in the back, so you can take foliage green, and put a tiny bit of foliage green. That is going to warm a tiny bit more the, uh, the background in some areas. You can take plantation pine. Like if there were leaves in there, um, other leaves in there, that was the foliage green, let's see, let's put the foliage green again in here, and foliage green now also you can also bring some colors of the flower for example the medium rose 
we have not finished with the flower, but um, I wanted uh, to show you some effects for the background, additional effects. So, for example, if you want to bring a tiny bit of that medium rose color. Don't forget the extender. And then we can take a tiny bit of that medium rose and add it um, in some areas of the design. Remember that if you put colors in your background, you should put uh, also you should uh, put some on the edges so that it matches. And for example, I'm going to put a, a tiny bit of the um, ring in there. A plantation pine. Come that calm down that there and I really like the orangey in there and there's a lot of orange in these flowers so I'm gonna take the brown mother the color of the flower is brown mother and bright yellow so the cut yellow bright yellow some of the orange in there put some orange in here So, let's, so we have we're doing this. Let's do the leaves. So we are putting some more of that foliage green there. Okay, so let's let the leaves dry and the background dry, and we're gonna finish with the flower. So now, um, before I continue with the flower and dry it a little, tiny bit more, I want to glaze this side a tiny bit with the burn umber with a dry time extender. I need more of the dry time extender. You can even put it on um, coat everywhere. This twist will quiet this down a tiny bit. I'm going to put extender, dry time extender, and I'm going to put the final layer of detail on this flower. Now, since everything is already 
base coated and on the second stage I can put extender all over and I'm gonna re-highlight, reshade and I will put the lines on the red section so let's see, let's start with white titanium white See the areas that we want to highlight. We want to highlight it in here. We want to highlight a tiny bit this this one here. And let's see something happening in there. I put wrong color in there. I think the background was not completely dry. And when I put the glazing, it bring the green to the top, to the flower. Okay, so white. Okay, so this is white. Bring a liner. And this time I'm going to make dots. So bouncing. Now, I want to also extend, um, re highlight this in here. And dust it, the lightness. This one in here. Let's see, in here, some white. Okay, let's continue highlighting with white and then we're going to take a picture with these new highlights.
going to put a tiny bit on the bottom, not too much. And I'm going to put also on this side. reason why I have it this way the camera is so that you can see where I am because I am going a tiny bit faster now because this is only repeated real re repetition of what we did before we're just re-highlighting the same places Okay, so you can also add more banana cream in some areas if you need to. Okay, you can take um, some of the Y plus the plus the medium rows and highlight some areas of the petal of the pink section that also will give it more shape so I'm making like a pink color with the medium rose and the the medium rose and the warm white. So we are still highlighting. In some um, of the one white plus medium rows also on this side. And we should not overdo so uh, this is going to be the last one. At this point, you're going to check which areas need more shading, for example. I probably need a tiny bit more shading in here. And I'm going to put the red rose. in some areas and shade a tiny bit so put first some of the extender and then you can add either red rose or you can also add um, 
brown matter plus the burn number. But I'm not going to overdo. I think I have um, enough of my shadings. Now we're going to make some paint some beans with black plum. Let's see. I'm going to try to see if black plum works. I think it work. It works. And bring it a tiny bit higher in here. And Take it a tiny bit outside of the of the line in there. So we don't need to do all this on camera. So I'm gonna do a few on camera, and then I'm gonna finish um, outside of the camera. So we don't have to do all this on camera. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do only a few on camera. Make sure that it follows the contour of your flower petals. And some comes from the others. And I'm gonna finish putting all these paints. And I don't think they're showing, so since they're not showing, what I'm going to use is Black Plum plus Burn Umber. So I'm going to combine Black Plum plus Burn Umber to make a darker color. And that's the color that I'm going to use for the beans. And that color let's see. Black plum plus burnt umber. Tiny bit darker. It's darker. No, that's not that much darker so that's perfect okay so I'm gonna continue putting this paint on camera so that we don't have very huge videos and uh, the other thing that I'm gonna do is put it also let me just show you in here it's a tiny bit in here and there are a tiny bit in here And let's see, tiny bit in here, and the remainder of, and a tiny bit in here. So the remainder you can find them, and what we're gonna do is this center we're gonna highlight. So that center, we're gonna take a tiny bit of bright yellow. and highlight maybe sunny yellow plus bright yellow And we can blend that with saffron.
think my saffron is not good. Okay, so you don't want to lose all your saffron, so make sure you don't lose your saffron. So this break and uh, now the these lines with the other color the step that we're gonna do before I take the final picture for the flower is a uh, float with that black plum plus burnt umber in here because this is very dark very very dark in here those three, three petals. And then the other. And let's take one more picture. And let's do the flowers, no, I mean the, the leaves. Let's do a picture and we're gonna do the leaves. I was not able to take the picture because it's storming outside and, and it's too dark but um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish with the leaves and tomorrow I will take a better picture so we're going to use some of the glazing and um, that was the extender and then I'm going to put some plantation pine. I'm going to use plantation pine to shade. I can blend the plantation pine with the light avocado and make a um, color in between and then shade again with plantation pine. So this is plantation pine plus light avocado. And let's shade. this. You can use a mop if you want to. And then the one on the top Again, uh, don't forget if, if you need any any help with the floating, check on the acrylic painting club. We have a video library with a lot of techniques, videos that can help you. Okay, so we shaded and now we want to highlight with a tiny bit of the foliage screen. And even we can add some of the yellows with the foliage green. So let's see. Foliage green plus sunny yellow. And we can use this to highlight.
So we are highlighting with foliage green plus lemon yellow, I mean bright yellow. If you think you overdid it, you can always um, put back the base coat. I want to put some plantation pine on this side. And that leaves it kind of disappearing into the background. Now, let's take some olive green, I mean, foliage green plus bright yellow. And Okay, so that one, this one in here, I'm just gonna highlight it with foliage green. Even foliage green seems to be too light for such a leaf. Then, if you want to, you can add some of the pink colors on the leaves. Let's try the medium rose plus light avocado. And we can add, let's see, we can add a tiny bit of pink on this one. And maybe on this one. Kind of then with the light avocado there. Okay, one more thing I want to do. I'm gonna dry. I'm gonna dry and I want to bring the burnt umber too on this background. So I'm gonna dry and bring the burnt umber and take a picture. Okay, I'm gonna put a tiny bit of burnt umber in here. Trying to make this even darker in there. Some burnt umber in here. Okay, and I want to put burnt umber on this side, even more burnt umber. more burnt umber on this side There's one cast shadow that I forgot, two cast shadows that I forgot. Let's see, let's find all the cast shadows that I have not uh, painted yet. Cool. Okay, there's one in here.
this one there there's another one in here I need to put more burnt umber. Let me put more burnt umber and we can find those cast shadows. So there's one here. And there is one in here. When you have done with all these uh, tints and shadings, be, be sure, make sure that none of your uh, white sections have become contaminated with all the glazings. And if they have been like mine, then uh, bring back those very strong uh, white sections on your flower. So bring back very, very strong very very strong areas of white and I hope I want to show you that um, also you can take some areas um, with the um, brown mother and the burnt umber and put some darker sections in here and then blend them Trying try mix tender and black plum and burn over float. Black plum. And extender. Now this is trying to be extremely, extremely like in the photograph, but you don't have to do this if you don't want to. It kind of completes it a tiny bit. Now I want to add some highlights of yellow in some areas, so this is bright yellow.
and then we can take some banana cream. Now this is all this me be picking because it was okay the other way, but I'm reinforcing. Oops, that is too light, too fast. So bright banana cream plus bright red, yellow. And extend it and blend it. A banana cream, the bright yellow, and bring some highlights on the yellow. Do the same on the other side. Banana green and, and bright yellow. And it's not everywhere because if you put it everywhere then it's not a highlight. And we are just trying to highlight some sections. of the yellow. Let's also put some in here on this one. Banana cream plus bright yellow. And I'm going to Take that um, camion jello, which is a tiny bit darker, and shade. Banana cream plus bright yellow. Fine, very deep um, sections like this one and shade darker in there. Like for example that one. Um, make sure that you add some of the extender before starting it and you can take plantation pine plus light avocado which was our shading color and shade inside those pockets Let's 
going to make it even prettier. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it like I have it right now. Let me go back. And I hope you enjoyed this project. I know it's not an, um, it's a very different project. Um, but there's some techniques that you can learn from this. If you don't like the background, please uh, use a different background that you like. Um, flower, the same flower can be painted on a very light background and um, it's going to look very pretty too. Instead of using a, a darker background like I did, you can paint this a uh, very soft background and it's going to look very pretty. I decided to put a gold line in here. And before I do that, I want to protect, uh, because I'm going to put tape uh, to put the line, I want to protect the design. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a protected layer of glazing medium. When you put this, then you can continue putting uh, other colors. Okay, so I put the layer of protective barrier, but I noticed that um, somehow, even though I used the dryer, um, it was taking the color. So I, lo I lost the white areas again. So I'm after I finish putting this lime, I will reapply the highlights or any color that I think I have lost. Um, if that happens to you, you can also do that. Okay, so I put uh, tapes, and this is a gold leafing pen, and I'm just going to gold leaf that line, uh, or you can use paint, whatever you want to use. Just put a gold line in between. So I removed the tape, and this is how it looks. Mm -hmm.